Profoto B10 and A1. Is it the ultimate wedding photographer lighting kit? I think today we're about to find out. Hey guys, my name is Mike Dragon. I am the owner of Dragon Studio. I've been a photographer for over 15 years, been in the wedding industry for just as long. Over the years, I've used all types of lighting gear. I'm talking, I started with on-camera flashes and moved to off-camera flashes, which turned into like these Frankenstein multi-flash unit things. And then that grew into heavy, studio gear with battery packs and I got tired of it being so big and so heavy um, and I got tired of it taking forever for the setup and the breakdown and and all the logistics of it uh, so I started a search for something smaller and better uh, I found the Photix Indra system and used that for a few years. It's small and light-ish, it's powerful, it's reliable. I love the Photix brand, um, but it wasn't the perfect fit. And then I found the B10, I kind of fell in love. Let me start by saying that I would have never thought I would be considering purchasing Profoto. Um, I was always in the camp that it was expensive, that people who use it are just fanboys, and then it's overhyped by big name photographers. Um, but there I was with a bunch of stuff in my shopping cart from Profoto and I was pressing the purchase button. I've actually been using this kit for about two years now. I wanted to really get to know it uh, and give some honest feedback about it. This isn't gonna be a video of how the flashes work. I won't be giving a lot of technical specs. This is just gonna be my experience with the B10 and the A1 and how that pertains to my wedding photography and other types of photography like families and corporate stuff and just in general, I guess. I'll start off by talking about the positive things. Uh, the B10 is small uh, and that's a big deal. Uh, it fits into my Manfrotto rolling case that I bring everywhere, uh, so there's no need for extra lighting bags and stuff like that. Um, it's powerful enough for most often. It's not 1500 watt seconds, but usually 250 watt seconds is good enough. It's well made, uh, sort of, and I'll get to more of that later. Um, it is versatile. I'm actually using it right now as my video light, so there's multi-purpose and it's pretty easy to modify. Um, it's reliable. I really can't think of a time in the last couple of years that I've had misfires and that's probably taken, I don't know, thousands of photos or something. Um, they have good customer support. I did break my A1 or my A1 broke um, and more on that in the cons section later. Um, it's kind of, the interface is kind of annoyingly simplified. Uh, it kind of, when I first turned it on, I was like, this is this can't be all that there is. Um, but really that's it. I mean, it's kind of like a power button and that's it. I mean, you can look up videos on how to actually use it, but that's not really the purpose of this video right now. Sometimes though, like that simplification can be kind of like a con, I guess, if you will. Some of the menus and functions can be kind of clunky when trying to get into certain menus and do certain things. Um, but this also may be something specific to the way I shoot Maybe other people don't have that same issue. More specifically, I'm talking about my weddings and more, even more specifically, I'm talking about my wedding receptions. Uh, typically the way I like to shoot at a wedding reception is to have the A1 on my camera and then the B10 would be like on the dance floor. Uh, that way I can use any combination of those lights at any time during the night. It's incredibly versatile. Um, you know, I can use just the A1 or just the B10 or both or none, uh, depending on the lighting scenario that I wanna kind of create. So in that respect, it's, it's super versatile. But here's the quirk. I like to use my A1 on TTL and my strobe on manual. And the only way to do that with Profoto is to turn the B10 to group D. 
I apologize, this might get kind of confusing, so just bear with me. Then I like to control the power manually from the A1. No biggie, right? Like I've done that with a lot of other systems. Here's the annoying part. When I use the air remote, it only goes up to group C. There is a way to use group D, E, and F from the air remote, but again, it's kind of clunky and, and you have to like hold, hold buttons down and, and stuff like that. It's, again, that's not what this video is about. You can look up how to do it. But the point being, it's not as user friendly. Um, so whenever I go back to using the air remote, I have to switch back to group A on the B10 and it ends up being this weird thing. So I guess maybe my biggest disappointment may not be with the B10 or the A1. Maybe it's just with the air remote itself. I really don't have anything great to say about it. For, I think I paid over $400. I would have expected better. Uh, there's no wheel. Everybody knows wheels are kind of the jam for changing settings, but no, instead you have buttons and you have to press them and hold them. And sometimes a press is, does one thing in the hold that skips it full stops and it just gets kind of clunky. It's a very plasticky feel. It's kind of wobbly on the camera. It's just a disappointment for the price. Uh, I've used way better remotes that cost far less money. Um, I almost would suggest trying to figure out a different option. Uh, I suppose you could just use the A1 and as a trigger, but that seems kind of cumbersome and clunky again when you know you don't need to do that. Everything seems to be kind of wiggly and wobbly when it's mounted. The air remote, as I mentioned, kind of wiggles. The A1 kind of wiggles. The B10 kind of wiggles when it's mounted and and even as everything's kind of tightly tied down, it still wiggles. So I don't know. I've tried to fix it so many times. It doesn't, it doesn't make it better. So my A1 actually broke recently and I'm not sure how or when. I must have bumped it or set it down wrong while it was mounted on the camera. Um, but there's a little plastic spring underneath the hot shoe. It's a little plastic piece and it cracked and it wouldn't allow it to be mounted to the camera. It's kind of weird. You know, it seems like kind of a poor design uh, on probably one of the most important parts of the flash. It's how it connects to the camera. Uh, it broke pretty easily. I've, I've had other flashes that cost less money again that I've treated worse and this broke pretty easily. Um, it took about seven to 10 days to fix by the time I shipped it and got it back. It cost me about $125. So it's not horrible. Um, everything was super easy in terms of getting it fixed and that kind of stuff. And it got fixed relatively quickly. So I can't really say anything bad about that. The fact that it broke, I mean, I understand things break. It seemed like it broke a little bit easy. So probably another con is that everything is expensive with Profoto, uh, from the actual units themselves to the accessories. You want to buy a reflector, it's $100. You want to buy honeycombs, it's $100. Gel set, $100. It seems to be a $100 minimum buy-in for everything, but it's all made really well. Um, everything usually comes in a little case and the case is made really well. When you buy those like $25 sets from Amazon and you get the Amazon special with the gel set that comes in a Ziploc bag and it just has tissue paper kind of in between, this isn't like that at all. So to wrap this up, do I think this is the ultimate wedding photography kit? Probably. Uh, it's reliable, which is very important. Uh, it's small. Uh, I've put this into a messenger bag before, you know, the B10 and the Air Remote. It's tiny. Um, it's crazy portable. Um, again, there's cheaper models, yes, and they do similar things, but the things that Profoto does better are some of those little details that are kind of really important, like always working. I hope you guys enjoyed uh, watching this video and thanks for watching.